today we're in Italy and we're on the island of Sicily. We're in the capital city of Palermo and we are here to eat. We can't wait to show you some of the best food this city has to offer. Sicilian food is some of the most unique in Italy. The local food culture is heavily influenced by its past and here you'll find food that you won't see anywhere else in the country. This is our first video from Palermo and we're here to hunt down the best Sicilian street food. Watch out for delicious octopus and snails from the market, mouth-watering seafood pasta and famous Sicilian pastries. In this three-part series, we'll show you Palermo's tastiest food, from local favourites to traditional recipes. You don't want to miss this series. Get ready for some mouth-watering food. I'm Thomas. And I'm Sheena, and we're chasing a plate. We hope you're hungry. Let's eat. Mappe, Mappe, Mappe! has a really vibrant street food culture. So we're starting this video in Bellaro Market, which is the biggest market in Palermo. There's all this colorful, vibrant produce around me. There's a ton of seafood, meat, cheeses, olives, household goods, but there are also lots of street eats to sample here. So we're heading for that. spot the crowd which is gathered in front of our first stop. So we are going to start breakfast the Palermo way. We are going to eat fritula. Now fritula is probably not your usual breakfast. It's leftover calf scraps that have been boiled and then fried in lard. <laughs> There are a ton of people gathered around that stall eager for their frittola. So this is frittola. It is basically the scraps left over from a calf that's been slaughtered and I mean I think it's just tendon and cartilage and skin, a little bit of meat. Um, he sprinkled some black pepper over the top, uh, some lemon, squeezed some lemon over the top and then it's served piping hot. So it's super mysterious. He's got this huge basket that's covered with a cloth to keep the frittola warm. You can't see him but he just sort of reaches in, grabs a handful of the, the guts and scraps pops it on your plate and then serves it up. Let's just get in. I'm going to get this sort of gelatinous bit right here. Mmm. That bit was some tripe. It's great with the pepper and the, the lemon juice. So they really love their nose to tail eating here. And this is the perfect example of it. Let's just go for another bit. Get a, uh, a meaty bit. It's all very tender. So what they do with the bits is they boil it up and then they fry it in lard. So it is really, really tender and soft. It's got a lot of flavour. It really just tastes like um, beef. It's beautiful. And the fact that it's really hot. Oh. This is a really good breakfast. The guys were um, screaming at us while we were filming, saying, Mantra, Mantra, eat, eat, it's getting cold. And oh, this is so good. That was a fantastic start. So much flavor. And. The next thing's right here. We're going for some seafood now. There you go. What? Yeah. Cool, eh? So 
Sicily being the biggest island in the Mediterranean, of course means seafood. There's a lot of seafood here. So we've grabbed two things from this stall. In fact, he only does two things. We've got some sardines and some octopus. So I've got the boiled octopus here to start with. So it's very simple, boiled octopus. It's got a whole lot of um, olive oil over the top and then it's come with a lemon. So let's just squeeze some lemon juice on there and covered in um, parsley, a lot of parsley there. All right, get a big chunk. Mmm. Mmm. It's got a great flavor, a real burst of the sea, a nice saltiness. It's quite chewy, which is quite common with octopus. Probably would have liked it a little bit more tender. And I really like the zing of the lemon that was on there as well. That gave it a really nice sharpness. It balanced really well with that saltiness of the sea. And I love the color of it. It's really um, come out a beautiful color once it's been boiled. So it goes in white, comes out this beautiful pinky sort of purpley color. Mm. Incredibly simple street food. Boiled octopus, those fresh flavors from the parsley, the lemon, a little bit of olive oil. Really, really good and very simple combo. Perfect to the market street food. There are a lot of sardines around the waters of Sicily and so sardines are really, really popular. So these ones just seem to be rolled up and they've got breadcrumbs stuffed inside them, I think. There's some parsley over the top, some more breadcrumbs, and I think, actually, I spy a raisin. All right. Let's give this a taste. Mmm. Mmm. The sardine is so good. Thomas and I really love oily fish. It's got a really strong flavor. It's very meaty. The sardine is massive. And it has just been stuffed with um, a breadcrumb mixture. And then there's a pine nut on the top. So the cuisine in Sicily is very, very distinct. Palermo is considered the world's most conquered city. The Phoenicians of North Africa have been here, the Spanish, the Normans, the Greeks, the Arabs. And they did not join the Kingdom of Italy until 1861. So the cuisine is really widely influenced by Italian cuisine, but it's also got all of these cultural influences from its past. And that's where you see raisins and pine nuts and saffron and cloves and nutmeg in the food here in Sicily. It's really, really amazing. Mmm! Really, really good. Those were some intense flavors, particularly the fish. So if you like strong flavors, you'll like what we just had. And this market is full on as well. It's very yeah. intense. It's not the biggest market, but there's a lot going on in a very small area. Scooters, people shopping, tuk-tuks. It's crazy. One of the first things we do when we get to a new city is always check out the local market. It's a great way to familiarize yourself with local ingredients. We're heading over there, down that way for our next snack. Our next street food are vavalucci or snails. Now there are big baskets, mounds of live snails all throughout this market, but we're after the cooked one. These snails are cooked really simply and they have the most incredible smell because of these huge pieces of garlic. They're all cooked together with some olive oil, massive bits of garlic and covered in parsley. So let's just grab one and get it out of that shell. Oh, yeah. Mm, yum. Really, really tender. Really salty actually. Oh, they're good. I'm going to get another one. Mmm. Oh, those are beautiful. The um, the garlic flavors really penetrated in there really well, and they've been really heavily salted. Now they're very small, so let's get some more. Mmm, mmm, and they're full of a uh, full of liquid, and the liquid is really salty. They are really good. 
Sometimes snails can be a little bit um, tough and chewy. These are not at all, they're super soft and really, really easy to eat. You can see it just hanging out the little bit of, um, of snail. Mm. You just pull them out with your teeth. They are absolutely delicious. They've got a really good flavor, the garlic strong, that nice saltiness, really, really good. Oh, and not slimy at all, like you sometimes think snails might be. Nothing like that. We're still hungry after that street food, but luckily there is a brilliant trattoria just around the corner from the market. We ate here the other day while we were researching for the Sicily series, and the food is top notch. We can't wait to share it with you. This trattoria has been here since 1904 and it's a really local place, really casual, super busy. So as I said before, we ate here the other day as part of our research for this series and we loved it so much we had to show you. So we have just ordered a couple of pastas. I have got the cuttlefish uh, spaghetti and as you can see it is jet black with that cuttlefish ink. Thomas went for the spaghetti with swordfish and uh, aubergine or eggplant. He had that the other day and it was top notch. And to go with our pasta, we've got two glasses of vino bianco, just white wine, just the house white wine, and the glasses are brimmed. They are so full. You can see my spaghetti is just coated in that cuttlefish ink. It is jet black. Let's just taste this thing. No, no, no. It's really, really good. The pasta water was obviously very, very salty. And so the spaghetti is perfectly seasoned. It's got a really great savory flavor. And this uh, cuttlefish and it's sort of made um, the pasta quite creamy. I didn't get any cuttlefish pieces in that mouthful, so I'm gonna go for another bite. It's literally just pasta, the cuttlefish ink, and the pieces of cuttlefish. Beautiful. The cuttlefish is very, very tender. Not chewy at all. It's just a beautiful, savory, creamy texture. So good. So I have a tomato-based pasta, and this has swordfish in it. So you see swordfish all the time here at the market. They are absolutely massive. And this has a lot of swordfish in it. So all these cubes of swordfish. We've got some lovely big chunks of eggplant. We've got some fresh parsley all over there. We've got what looks like a little bit of mint. I'm not sure if that is. Mm. Oh. Oh. The tomatoes are full of flavor here. So it's got a lovely punch of sweetness and it's got a beautiful tanginess from those tomatoes. But I didn't get any swordfish and no eggplant that time. So you can see if I break up the swordfish, it's beautiful white fish inside. And definitely some of that spaghetti which is coated in that sauce. There's not too much of the sauce, but it just coats everything perfectly. Mm. Oh, it's really well balanced. The saltiness versus the sweetness and then that tanginess of the tomatoes is a perfect balance. And the eggplant's really well cooked. It's super soft, but it does have a little bit of bite, so you can still tell it's there. It's not completely just disintegrated and dissolving. This is some mint leaves in there, so it's giving it a real zing when you get one of those in your in your mouthful. And I love how perfectly the pasta's cooked. Super al dente, so it's got a nice bite on the teeth. It's not all soft and squishy and overcooked, and it is so perfectly covered in that sauce. Oh. It's really good, and it goes so well with the swordfish. It's quite a meaty fish, quite a solid fish. Mm. But a nice subtle flavour. I absolutely love this dish.
Sicily is very famous and has a long tradition for its pastries. So next we're going to a pastry shop which is family run and has been around since 1940. for sweets and as Thomas said um, Sicily is really famous for its pastry and we have two of the most famous Sicilian uh, treats in front of us this here is cassata so it is made up of ricotta which is that middle layer there on the bottom is some sponge cake which has been soaked in liqueur then it's topped with marzipan and then there's some candied fruits on top there and this here is the torta setta valley which is the cake of the seven veils I'm just going to um, have a taste of it before I talk you through what the different layers are. <laughs> oh my goodness, look at that, it's like the ultimate bite. Mm, so light, very chocolatey. So let me show you what layers we've got. We've got the top which is the chocolate mirror glaze, the shiny layer. Then there's some chocolate mousse, then some chocolate sponge. The lighter coloured uh, mousse is hazelnut Bavarian cream and then there's more sponge cake, some more cream. There's a praline layer in there which is really crunchy and then more chocolate sponge. So this cake is often uh, used as a birthday cake, it's a celebration cake and it's from this bakery right here. So this bakery crea created this cake. I'm going to go for another bite. Oh. It's the perfect level of sweetness. It's not sickly sweet, but that chocolate delivers a real sugar hit. And it's great with that hazelnut uh, praline crunch and that beautiful creamy mousse. This cassata has an incredibly long history. It dates back to the 10th century when the Arabs were ruling here in Sicily. So normally it would be an entire cake. We just have a, a slice of the cake here because there's just the two of us. We can't eat the whole cake. Dive right on in there. Oh, it looks really creamy, that ricotta in the middle. So cheese in the middle. Mm. Oh, yum. Oh. It's got a great hit of that ricotta, the cheese. It is quite sweetened. Oh, that is really, really good. I'm gonna get some off the back here. I'm not actually sure what this green is. It looks like it's probably pistachio. Oh, it's really, really thick. We'll get some marzipan and a whole lot of that ricotta. Mmm. 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 Yeah, it's pistachio. It's a little bit salted that on the back and that's quite um, solid it's like a icing whereas the ricotta and the marzipan from the top are really soft it's quite sweet I can really feel the sugar in my throat but you expect that with a cake like this it's a really good really unique flavor another super interesting dish that you'll only find here in Sicily suck the snail out of the shell. I went in. <laughs> I went back inside. I'm gonna start again. As we're ruling here in Sicily. <laughs> I got some cake in the throat. 